you go. Thank you very much uh, to Asha Komgisha, who's uh, always making sure we have a big grab across the African continent. So many headlines we sometimes don't have time for, uh, but she always takes off time to make sure we have all the big details in. Now, the big debate is now, folks. Welcome aboard. It is the press box once again, proudly powered by DSTV and, of course, the Kampala Serena Hotel. Let me quickly introduce the panel that joins us today, and I'll start off with a journalist at the extreme right, uh, Mr. Dakawa Ismail Chigongo, uh, joins us once in a while when we... Uh, need some expert analysis on, on a couple of issues here and there. Daka, welcome to the show as always. Um, thank you, Andrew. Mm. Uh, very glad to be here, mm. even if it's at a very awkward hour. What do you mean uh, awkward hour? Uh, it's after 10 p.m. Oh, it's wow. past my bedtime. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's fine. There you go. Uh, then I'll introduce the gentleman right next to Dakawa, a man vying for FUBA's top seat, the president itself, currently the VP administration, Mr. Nasa Serunjoji. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Pleasure having you here. Thank you, Andrew. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Asha Komgisha, everyone knows you. Uh, then we have uh, Grace uh, Quizera here, who is also vying for the top office, FUBA presidency, currently VP marketing. Grace, good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure. I, I love this because unlike other political offices or c c contests, you don't see the contestants talking and laughing or shaking hands. I mean, if you're Ugandan, you know Ugandan politics. Suddenly, these two have been sharing a laugh, uh, probably sharing some ideas. I don't know who's going to give who a job later, uh, probably after Sunday. Well, he's currently my boss, and I'm hoping to be his boss be by Sunday. Oh, wow. You're throwing uh, shots as fast as you can. <laughs> Guys, the two of you, uh, a pleasure having you, but I really have a question for each of you. Um, you know, to start a discussion about Ugandan basketball, because you all... Are brilliant minds that love the game of basketball that are making sure the sport grows as fast as it can uh, we hit new levels and i'll start with you nasa um please allow me to call you nasa throughout the show it's okay no problem uh, and mine is political at the beginning so i'm starting a little negative maybe you look at grace you're competing with him on sunday in that ballot well, what makes you think grace is not the right man is not fit enough to run the federation at the moment that it's you who people should vote in what, what is grace lacking to run Ugandan basketball. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I wouldn't say that he's liking anything. Mm. He's fit, as well as <coughs> I'm also fit. But I believe that uh, the age I have over him is that I have experience. I've been in this game for over 17 years. Mm -hmm. I've been the vice president admin, managing the secretariat, which is the focal point of the federation for four years. And I believe I have enough experience. Mm. But I don't doubt his capability. I don't doubt his competence. He's uh, very passionate about the game, as well as I am. Mm. So, yeah, so experience seems to be the, the tilt in there for you. Yes. Uh, Grace, uh, same question for you. You look at NASA, and he's talked about experience. He's been in, that, in the game for 17 years. He knows every corner of Ugandan basketball, probably international basketball as well. You, the youngster, are coming up and saying you need to move. What, what is it you think he lacks that you're bringing to the table now? Why shouldn't he be the next FUBA president to replace Ambrose Tashobi? That's true. Uh, NASA is uh, senior to me in uh, years spent in basketball. He has been there for 17 years. I've been here for, for nine. But the reason why I feel I am the person for the job is that in the, you see, to be, to be the federation president, you are essentially the manager of basketball in Uganda. And the best basketball manager, the criteria for being a good basketball manager mm -hmm. is that you have to have successes. Now, in 17 years and in my eight, I have more trophies than, uh, than NASA does. It doesn't, <laughs> it's not taking away from him as an administrator, but we want to win. Mm. Uh, I've been a player in the lowest division. I know exactly what it feels like to be playing at 9 o'clock in the morning at, uh, at uh, Makere Grounds. To know that you, are, you can't shoot on one hoop. If you go left, you'll not make it. If you go right, you will because the hoop is skewed. I know that that's a need for us uh, uh, as, as basketball. I've been a manager. I understand our need for water for midday games. And that as a second division team, you do not have as much money as people expect and therefore you require to look for sponsors who will give us the water as, uh, as players. Mm -hmm. I know uh, what it takes to take our national team from no ranking to number 15 and 16 for our boys and girls in Africa. For the three on three setup, we are number one and number two uh, for the boys and the girls. I know how to do that stuff because I am at the, at the national team managing. 
I, I know about the junior NBA and uh, managing children and taking them to become one of the best uh, junior NBA leagues in Africa. I have managed the Zone 5 in uh, Kampala. We had a tournament that hosts 10 countries. And uh, this boss lady from FIBA will tell you FIBA has never seen anything as nice as that. So whereas he has 17 years of experience, which is I, I, will, I will go to him when we need uh, for him to give me advice on what happened 16 years ago, whatever not. But as far as managing this game for us to win, I believe that I have won more and therefore I'll be able to take this country to more winning ways. Mm. Uh, right. The stage is set, guys. Keep tweeting. Send us those thoughts now. The hashtag is NTV Press Box. And by the way, you can also use uh, FUBA Presidency 2019. Dakawa, I'll quickly come to you uh, before I come to Asha. Ambrose Tashobia is stepping aside. He's, he's served his time in Ugandan basketball. We've had a few misses. We've had a few hits as Ugandan basketball. Where we are now, what do we need? What leader are we looking out for? Are we looking out for a leader who has experience, like Nasser has said, or a young man who seems to know everything about Success. the lower divisions? I'm quite a pseudo democrat uh, because I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm not very sure democracy is the best way to choose leaders, but I have to believe in it because it's the only pathway. It's actually the only. <laughs> it's only we are proven to provide uh, leadership. Um, when I see uh, Nasa and Grace, and I can attest, I know them very well, and they know me quite well. We've shared a uh, lot of conversation throughout my last um, 12 years in journalism. I'm very proud when I say 12, though mm. it's very unfortunate that I'm aging. I think there are, there are three things that uh, should be central that I think the president that we need that you're asking about. One, we need better funding for basketball. How we find it, they two have the answer. Mm. Two, um, we need infrastructure for basketball. As, um, as a university student 14 years ago at Makerere, we used to walk down to YMCA, and it was only the few of us. And to this day, we still walk down to YMCA. But YMCA has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. If you've lived as long as I have, you know there was a tennis court where that building is. And we only made it to the game. And probably there were 15 of us. And actually, the only thing that brought people to YMCA was in Kumba. Because at the time, Norman Bleak was flying over uh, the URI towers before it was built. <laughs> um, that is uh, 14 years ago. So that is the kind of bus we had. Three, which is for me also equally a challenge is grassroots development. How do we get people to start playing the game very early? Mm. There are few private ventures, I Hopes Academy, and then there's one that Stephen Omoni runs, and then there's another that Norman Bleak runs. But these are not sufficient because for all the parents that take part in this, you need to probably part with 20,000 shillings per day. How many of us can afford that? Not many. Mm. But how many kids would we help if FUBA had a genuine grassroots program? So for me, it's those three. Okay. Funding, mm -hmm. grassroots, infrastructure. Uh, I'll give you chances to uh, ask uh, the two gentlemen questions, but I'll come to Asha now. Uh, both of them, luckily for us, have been under the current management uh, in Ugandan basketball. So the question I would ask you uh, is, are we looking for a new direction? Are we looking to have you know, a few projects that have been running in the current federation probably done better? The new president must suddenly have a specific agenda. What are you looking out for, for whoever takes over that, that top seat? Well, um, when you look at uh, the sports landscape in Uganda, mm. basketball has grown in the last one decade, but it's time to move on. Mm. You know, it's time to move on to the next level. Like, uh, football, of course, has been surpassing all these things and, and, and the levels at that, but basketball needs to get there. We need to get into the conversation. And uh, playing uh, for City Oil, for example, to play at the FIBA Africa uh, Champions Cup and finish fifth for Uganda to play in the World Cup qualifiers and be at that stage, for some of our players, like Robinson Opong playing in uh, the, the FIBA, um, the, the Basketball League, uh, Zama, uh, Jamila Nansikombi playing, going out to be outsourced really, to play for another club. This shows progress. And, and I won't even go into the three on three, but how do we get to the next level? We can't get to the next level if we are doing the same things that were being done 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we need new ideas. We need people that can bring those ideas and implement them. Because there's a lot of paperwork going around and yeah. uh, people saying, oh, I can do this, I can do this in a manifesto six months, two years down the road, and nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. So it's about time we get that person that is going to move the game of basketball to a new direction, but literally by also showing what they've done. If they've done something that, is, that has been effective and has helped Uganda to get to that one move, can this person do this for 10 next steps 
okay if now they have the power because i don't want to believe that the two of them didn't do what they wanted to do because ambrose was president mm -hmm. you know if they've been doing what they're doing then we need to do that 10 times to get to the next level uh, nasa I i'm excited to know that 17 years of experience is what you're going to offer because for me experience is, is very key uh, at the top office in in national federations whether it's the presidency whether it's marketing but whether it's hosting years. press books no 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 press books in <laughs> press books for me I'm a young person uh, <laughs> 17 years in basketball you've seen us grow from where we were and I've, I've seen some of your quotes in the media. I've seen what you intend to do. But I think for the viewers of Pressbooks out there, you should maybe tell us two or three major things that are on your plate now. Because 17 years is a long while. So like Asha says now, what is it that we didn't do in those 17 years, whether you were in charge or not, that now you think starting Sunday, when you win the presidency, that is what you're going to start with? Uh, <coughs> thank you, Andrew. But uh, before I answer that, mm. I just want to make a quick rejoinder okay. to what my brother Grace here said. Uh, you see, being successful, I would say that uh, if I had the same financial muscle as the Oilers, I would definitely be a champion with the Titans. Mm. Uh, secondly, he talked about the national team, junior NBA. I believe those are federation products. Uh, you see, if you don't have a strong administration, if you don't have a strong secretariat, then you can't tell me that you'll be successful as a national team or at junior NBA. There is a foundation mm -hmm. to that. And that foundation is the position that I hold. Now, going to, to what I intend to do, my focus wants to be on uh, grassroots development. Uh, Dakaba mentioned it here, that grassroots development, that is very key. How do I want to do that? I want to focus on primary school basketball. We want to have primary school league, a secondary school league, mm -hmm. That way, we shall be able to get the talent identification that we want to have the progress from the youth all the way to the senior levels. When you look around today in uh, what we call the nationals, you find that these schools are fighting for players. You see players rotating. You see a player playing for three, four different schools before they complete. The reason is that there is uh, scarcity of those players. So we need to go down to build from the primary schools. If we have a strong primary school league that will feed into the secondary school league, then we shall be able to move forward. Mm. That way we shall have a lot of talent to pick from. Now, we have a program of the junior NBA, but you, you will realize that there is a gap because we have 12 to 14. But before 12, what happens? There is nothing. That's when we bring in the primary mm -hmm. after 14 what happens zero that's when we have to bring in the secondary school league now the junior nba is a very good program mm. but it is focusing on a number of schools mm. but when we enroll uh, when we roll out the primary school and secondary school eventually we want this to be national secondly uh, the league the national basketball league my dream is to have a league that is all inclusive. When you talk about the National Basketball League, I want us to have regional leagues. We have the Northern League, the Eastern League, Southwestern, and the Central, such that when we go for the playoffs, the National Basketball League playoffs include the nation, not only Central national. and Kapala here, mm -hmm. national. So that's going to be my main focus. Okay. Uh, Grace, uh, and I'm going to give Dakawa now and Asha the chance to ask any questions they want, but uh, I also want to ask you really what you're going to look out for, what you're going to start with. But before you even start, the man has thrown cold water on, 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 on your, the achievements you've kicked off with. Oil has had money, so you're basically pampered. And everything else you've done in terms of FIBA and you know, the, the juniors have all only happened because there's been a structure that has been created administratively, which by the way he's been leading. So in his view, you might have your achievements but you've worked within a system that was a well-oiled machine. Uh, without a doubt. Uh, look, I am not taking away... I work under... NASA is my, my boss currently at, um, at the Federation. And he does an amazing job uh, at administration. Uh, but you see, my docket and, and what, I have, what I am doing is I've run the, the junior NBA for three years. In my opinion, that's our best grassroots program for Uganda currently, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Mm. What the junior NBA has done is that in its time, 
we have affected about 60 schools. For each school, if you're going to be a part of the junior NBA, you must have a basketball court. So those 60 schools have either refurbished or they have built a basketball court. Now, as a federation, we'll never ever have the money to go out and build 60 basketball courts. Those same schools are giving these children scholarships. Ordinary level is having scholarships for the players that they have. Those kids are being coached. Because we don't have very many coaches, the people who are coaching them now are players in our league. Mm. Those, that means that we're increasing the number of coaches in Uganda. Those coaches realize that my kids, as they are playing for me in this junior NBA, are not doing enough, I not have enough time with them. So what have they done? They have gone and set up these academies. Uh, at City Oil, we are supporting uh, IHOOPS. What these academies are doing is that they are teaching these children when they are under 12. Mm. And they are, whereas it's true, it costs money, but we are starting somewhere. Now we have under 12s who are playing the basketball. Because these schools are giving scholarships because of this program, the parents are saying, you know what, I need to give my child a skill set because there's a very good chance he'll get a scholarship and therefore I don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. So what this thing has done is that entire ecosystem is being catered for, has become, has, is alive, has been born out of this league. Those are things that I am doing now. And I am comfortable with the fact that that stuff is happening today because of the work that I'm doing. And therefore I feel like I have the opportunity as a president to increase on, uh, to affect uh, things like those and to Im increase the number of partnerships that we have like that. Mm. What is on your immediate table? He's, he's told us a thing or two that he is going to focus on first. What is on your in to do trip? Well, I, I don't have a, I don't have, I don't have just a to do because there are things which I'm doing today and I'm just going to continue doing those. Mm -hmm. I'm at the, at the national team level. And at the national team, I have taken our national team from no ranking to where we are today. The, the three and three, which I'm, so, which I'm so very happy about, we are number one in Africa for the under 23s, number one in Africa for the women, and number two for the men. For the seniors, the five on five, we're number 15 and number 16. That's something that I, have, that's something that I am a part of now, and I'm going to continue to do. City Oil, for instance, which, is, uh, which Asha talked about, is number five in Africa. That's no mean feat. For you to be able to win this zone back to back as a club means that you're doing something right as a club. And I want to continue to take that and use it to drive our country and our federation. Mm. Okay, uh, Dakaba, the, the, the debate is here. They are all yours now. I'll step away now. Um, <laughs> um, and actually, when he spoke about uh, three on three, I wore quite a green because I spend my sunny days at uh, National Council of Sports. And I know as council, we've funded these programs uh, quite a bit. And actually, basketball is one of the six federations that we support directly um, in every quarter, including boxing, netball, uh, football, athletics, and university sports. And basketball is one of those six. But um, I probably have uh, one major question, and this stems from the kind of debate that is ongoing uh, in some of the circles. Nasa and Grace. Haven't you entirely reduced this contest to KIU versus City Oil? That's extremely unfortunate. Uh, because from where I stand, that's what this contest has become. Mm. And this is um, exactly what I think murdered football. At some point when the presidential campaigns were reduced to what Express wanted and what Villa wanted, whether it was Troa Kakaira against Chris Ruanika in the 90s, or it was Denis Obua against Troa Kakaire. That's what it, it was. And this is what I feel. Um, it's about KU accusing Grace of using his position to leverage on how many titles City Oil have won. And they've won six in a row. I'm losing count, Grace. You can remind me. Six in a row. Six in a row, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, because my team Falcons no longer win anything. Mm. We well, just got promoted, promoted from the lower so division. Let's try again. Yo, so uh, I want to start with Grace. Is, it, is this City Oil versus KU? Absolutely not. But I, I wish it was because it would be so much easier there. For <laughs> uh, the, the, the truth is it's not. NASA is a, is a formidable uh, uh, opponent. On opponent. This man is, is something else. This campaign has taken us uh, to places. I didn't think that we'd work as hard as we have now. And, and, and kudos to him. But he's also, a very, he's also a very good manager for KU. He has gotten them to a final. But I'm also a good manager at uh, City Oil. And we have managed to beat them in the final and in the semifinals when we have met. It's not about that. And, and, and NASA, 
and Nasa and I at uh, at uh, even at a personal level have no. I mean, before we are, Nasa is our lawyer, by the way. Uh, for and you're both Arsenal fans. And we're both Arsenal so fans. So t- you have no pressure yes. in and, football. And, and, and I can tell you, <laughs> before before the games when we are meeting uh, for office work and we are, we are all joking, we're saying tonight we are meeting for the for the game. You know, you're not going to win anything, and he's going to say the same to me. It's all banter. We are comfortable. We are we are we are we. Are, we we love the sport. It's it's good competition. We are going to go at this like it is a final. Whoever comes out uh, at the end of the 40 minutes, you shake hands and say, you know what, we all did well. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nasser, s- it's similar question. Uh, to some, it sounds like you want to become fo- fo- football president to stop City Oil from winning. <laughs> is uh, that it? Uh, you said it's a feeling you have, uh, and you're right. And something I've had because I'm around basketball uh, circles. I, I don't think whether that is true, because... Uh, <coughs> From what we are discussing and from our manifestos, you clearly see that there is nothing between KIO and uh, City Oil. We are just offering what we intend to do for for this game. But you know the game of politics. Uh, The fans are free to say whatever they they want to say. They will come up with all sorts of things. But uh, from the two of us, we are here and you've heard uh, what we are talking about. So I don't think it is between the two teams. Mm. In any case, Six-time champion, back to back, back to back. I've only played one you final. Say as back to back for a third time because <laughs> it's three. Back to back, back to back, uh, back so to back. It can't be. It can't be something like that. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, we are, we're up and running on Twitter for all your reactions. Do you have questions for both NASA and uh, Grace as well? The hashtag is NTV Pressbox, or you can also use uh, FUBA Presidency 2019. Asha, you've got questions for both uh, gentlemen. Yes. Um, I'm going to start with. Uh, Mr. Nasa Serunjoji. <laughs> um, Alhaji, indeed. <laughs> yeah, um, Nasa, you've been uh, Secretary General or Vice President Administration for FUBA. Um, sure. What is it that you feel and why is it that you feel you're going to do new things in your new term as President that you didn't begin on as Secretary General? And then before you answer, to Grace. Grace, you've been uh, Vice President for Marketing for one year. Eight months. Eight, Eight months. months. Okay, since I fall. Um, basketball has been struggling recently in terms of our sponsorship for the league, for the national teams. You have to run to government all the time. What is it that you're going to do, you know, to change this situation? Because for a game that is run really by elite people, people that are understanding in this society, I think basketball deserves more. But to NASA first. Uh, thank you, Asha. Uh, clearly, you said that uh, I've been the general secretary and vice president admin. And now I am vying for the pos- position of the president. The two are quite different. And of course, when you're the president, there are some decisions you make. And when you're the VP admin, there are certain decisions you can't make. So clearly, when I become the president, there are some decisions that I feel I can make for the growth of this game. So for one to say that you've been the general secretary and VP admin, and why do you think? Uh, why do you think that there are things that you intend to do that you haven't done? For me, that answers it. Because at the top level, you're the final decision maker. And if you have brilliant ideas that you think would take the game forward, then you're in a position to do that. Okay, I would like to ask uh, because I would think that it's a, an executive committee, you know, that makes up the final decision, you know, on this. And what is it you feel that you know you're going to do? You know that you you weren't able to do as secretary general, or that wasn't approved, for example, by Ambrose Tashovia w- as president. Uh, you see, all leaders have their own philosophies. As a president, you'll have your own philosophy. I'll give you a, I'll I'll give you an example. Uh, during our executive, and Grace is here, he will tell you. Last year, when we were going for under 18 in Dar es Salaam, I sent an email to the executive. And I was like, hey guys, look here. Yes, I know we are going to compete at this tournament under 18, but my opinion is that probably, why don't we prepare for the under 16 that is coming up in 2019? Because for me, I felt that we were going to compete, but we were not going to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So my idea was, if we prepare for two years and prepare the under 16, then we play in the under 16. We prepare that team for another two years to play in under 18. We prepare that team to go to the seniors. Then we shall achieve a lot. Other than getting players, you know, one, two, three weeks, and then we prepare and then go for a tournament. So for me, my philosophy is preparation. 
you prepare these players psychologically, technically, for a period of at least two years, mm. knowing that in the next two years there is this tournament that is coming up. And then we move on from structure to structure, under 16, under 18 seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace, at you, uh, Ash, I think, talked about you being in marketing. Uh, you've achieved a few, but we skip running to government every time. Uh, to get funding. We've had stories, I was reading a story about a few camps that have been cancelled. Uh, what is it you're going to change now? Um, uh, I think we're, I think at, uh, at the FUBA, I joined, I joined the XCOM in April last year and I joined because the, our colleague who was, who was uh, in this position had to move his family for, for because he got another job. Now, when I got the when I got the job in April, I found the federation had not had the league had not had a sponsor for for three years. In uh, after getting the job in April, we had uh, Tusker, right? Only that they were for the us. playoffs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yes. He's uh, mm -hmm. uh, the secretary general has corrected me. There was some. There was no money, but there was something. There was some money. Okay. So anyway, so mm -hmm. in the uh, so I start in April, and uh, three months after that, we had uh, I had gotten the federation 100 million shillings. Now, that was my position as vice pre as, as vice president of marketing, and uh, that's the job I did. My my terms of reference are to find us uh, money to find a sponsorship. Mm -hmm. At a, if I am able to do that in that short period of time, I'm confi and as I'm and as, as a vice president, I am confident that I'll use the same connections to as as the president for us to get even more money. There is a need for us to get this money. The things that uh, Ismail was talking about on sponsorship are true. You require this 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 money. Also on uh, on where we are on uh, government and its support. When I started off at the at the at the at the national team, we tried to get money from government, and government was. Uninterested. They said, who is basketball? What are you going to do? Where have you been? What are you, you know, we're saying we want to go for friendlies because we want to build up to when we can go for qualifiers. And they said that didn't, didn't work like that. So we had to go and look for money ourselves. I had to, to, f to, to speak to corporates, mm -hmm. had to speak to friends and colleagues until we, we got enough money for us to travel and make it to qualifiers. And three years later, government gave us uh, 100 million shillings or so. We jumped up to 300 thereafter, and now we are at uh, 1.2. Billion. Yeah, yeah, 375 million shillings every three months from uh -huh. government. So, so, so you, so as you can see, I have been able to get us to a place where we can get sponsorship, whether it's from government or from from the private sector, and that's what you need to do at at this level. And as the president, I don't, I'm not going to change tomorrow. I, I intend to to, if anything, double my efforts in that position. Mm. All right, there you go. I think we've got to cross over to Joel Kamadi very shortly and uh, get his side of the story and what is happening on social media. Good shoe, by the way. Nice shoe, Grace. Which one is this now? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a basketballer. Yeah. It's a, uh, this is a LeBron James. I'm a fan. Uh, can we, can we don't shoot me. This 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 uh, there, You know, there are, there are seventy yeah. there are seventy three voters in that general assembly. Uh. If uh, seventy two of them saw that shoe. Uh. NASA retains one vote <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the sheet itself is uh, <laughs> huh? is uh, quite uh, enlightening. Then you yeah. go for a weekend. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I should go. Grace, Grace, I'm traveling to Bugweri this weekend, so I have a graduation party. Mm. And sure, I'll become the chief guest if I went <laughs> in that show. <laughs> <laughs> I want us cross over, Joel Kamadi. When we come back, I want us to talk about facilities. I want us to talk about shoes really what the players are going to be using moving forward because I, I still hear these stories uh, nasa i still hear these stories grace players don't have enough facilities they don't have enough jerseys probably not enough water like you were saying at midday we don't have enough courts for these guys to go on so we're going to talk about that what your plans are moving forward because we've got to develop the game either way joel kamadi is standing by to tell us a thing or two about because i'm told social media is burning all right, <laughs> guys, you know it is a heated debate when you have the kind of reaction I am having on social media. I'm coming to that in a bit. Uh, before I do that, uh, let me just introduce Albert Ahave, who is uh, a basketball enthusiast that we all know and also works with the national team in different capacities. But I'll be coming back to, uh, to Albert in a bit. Let me just sample some few comments uh, on Twitter. Uh, Ian Taremwa says, Mr. Serun Joji deserves it, surely. Uh, Frank Jaden says, Grace Quizera all the way. Uh, Eugene says, Grace Quizera, elevate the game. Trevor Isaac, Grace is the right man for the job, my thought. Uh, at Kwasize, Chris Ogon says, judging from the intros, NASA won zero Quizera. NASA's intro was on point. Ivan Tabazi, basketball needs both of them. 
We have Sir Fabian Pavez who says all that jibi jabba of who has the best manifesto aside, what FUBA needs is a person who's so passionate about the game and who's capable of ensuring that the federation is seldom awash with wrangles as it's always been. Patrick Karungusi, you say, uh, why isn't Uganda mentioned in the new Africa Basketball League formed by the NBA? We'll be coming to that in a bit, Patrick. Uh, Mo Monoja, who's Dudu's Dudu, says, Grace firing shots this early. <laughs> Atuhaire J. Sherura says, yay, glad to see uh, Dakaba on a sports show, uh, on a TV sports show yet again. Venice Omona says, both candidates are part of the system that has killed up country basketball, registered at country teams, pay for football officials to officiate uh, their games out of Kampala. Where does the money they pay to the federation go to? Good question. Uh, Nwagaba Giuliano says, winning many trophies doesn't mean you can be a good manager. Sir Fabian Pavez, uh, if the mode of selection was being played by the rules of the game, the football uh, presidency 2019 should be decided by a series of three-pointer shots by each quizera and NASA. That's nice, yeah? Nice. And NASA on the court and not by democracy. Albert, let me bring you into this a bit. Um, very, very interesting uh, debate going on there. Yes, what is your take? What have you picked out? Um, a few things, uh, of course. Uh, like Dudus, uh, Dudus is a player in the league um, saying that Grace opened with shots about the <laughs> championships. Um, it's a slam dunk when it comes yeah. to championships. Yeah, uh, yeah. City Oilers have beaten <laughs> every one of us, so we can't get into that conversation with them unless your team is named the Falcons. They're the ones that have as many championships mm -hmm. as them. Um, however, that being said, uh, they're both uh, people of the game. Uh, they've, they've, they've worked with the game for many years. The difference is Grace has played and, and NASA hasn't. Exactly. Th that's just the difference. Uh, but otherwise, they have both been in the game. Um, it, it's an important conversation to have. I'm really glad that they got to be in the same space and have a conversation together. The voters out there, the 62 of them, can then get to see um, who can defend whatever they have said they are going to do. Uh, it also opens uh, an opportunity for them to actually say what they have done. Uh, besides what, because most campaigns are premised on, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It's yeah. always beautiful to have people who can tell you, I have done this so far, give me some yeah. space yeah. to do so much more. Uh, we've seen someone who raised a very, very brilliant point about the NBA and FIBA deal. Yeah. And of course, for those who don't know, the NBA and FIBA plan to launch a professional basketball league in Africa called the Basketball Africa League that will feature 12 teams from the continent. Does this turn us in good stead? Is there a light shining at the end of the tunnel? Two things. Um, one, for you to be able to compete in that league, um, there's actually, there has been misinformation out there that uh, the league is happening for yeah. the first time. Yeah. It's not the first time the league is happening. It's been a tournament as opposed to being a league. It's been a tournament that tournament. you qualify for uh, by way of playing in your zone. So you play in your zone, which in our case is uh, zone five. Then the best two teams qualify for the Afro uh, it's, it's been uh, an Afro uh, Africa club championship. Uh, so now that club championship, some, some call it uh, Champions Cup. Yeah, yeah. Now that championship is what FIBA has taken in a negotiation with the, the NBA and allowed the NBA to run it as a basketball African league. So that league will now be reduced to 12 teams, four starters. The 12 teams with have... two teams from yes, every with country? No, uh, what, what, what it is is that there's no country that should have more than two, two teams. teams yes. Because previously there have been some giant countries yeah, that have yeah, more than two teams dominate, in the league. Yeah. So now there has been a rule set down that no one can bring more than and two teams. Uh, two teams. So the 12 teams for the starters have been earmarked to come from 10 countries. Now, Uganda is not on that list. The reason why Uganda is not on that list, even though we have been competitive in the continent, even though our last representative at the Champions Cup, City Oilers, finished fifth, which is a very high position, the reason why we are not there right now is because we don't have an international standard facility that can host TV games internationally. The other two East African countries that have been put on that list Kenya and Rwanda, even though we have had better results against them in yeah. recent times, Rwanda is building a 10,000 seater in Kigali. Kenya has committed to, re to renovate Nyayo and Kasarani, and Kasarani which Kigali. are big stadia. Somebody raised a valid point, uh, Venice Omona, who yeah. said uh, both candidates are part of the system, uh, a system that has killed up country basketball. We haven't had much uh, from both candidates talking yeah. about up country uh, basketball. 
Yeah, yeah um, basketball has traditionally been a game that has happened in the center of yeah. Uganda. Mm. And uh, I think it is unfair to blame that directly on the two candidates in the current election. Mm -hmm. Because in the current administration in which they serve is when actually a, a, a region outside Kampala started having its own league, the Eastern uh, League in Mbale. So you could say that this administration has done more about basketball going up country than any other previous administration. Does, uh, uh, does the same administration have more that it should have done? Yes, a lot could be done, a lot more could be done. Um, there are regions where basketball should happen more regularly, but what you can be sure of is that in the interim, there have been steps made for basketball to move to those places. And I think any of these two gentlemen that wins will have a lot more to do, but also has the intention to do it because they all have pulled for, for those games to happen up country. Oh, but uh, yeah. before I let you go, from a basketball enthusiast perspective, yeah. what, what gaps need to be filled you know, to make sure we are as competitive as, say, Nigeria, Angola and the likes? Our biggest gap as a country is the lack of an international standard facility. We have gone to countries which we know are not even as well developed as Uganda. And you find they have a 5,000 seater. I, we went to Mali to play a qualifier in February and they had a beautiful 5,000 seater stadium in the middle of nowhere. Kampala needs a home of basketball. Lugogo, as well as it has served us for all these years, is not enough for internationally televised basketball. The, th the biggest thing we need is a basketball arena that can bring the people of Africa to see how hospitable Uganda is because when we do have zone 5 championships here uh, the city oilers mm. hosted the, with the federation hosted the championship last year fantastic championship uh, and, and and we need that we n we need something like that to be able to be here and that can only be done with a facility oh, but you're talking about because uh, my producer tell me one minute it, talking about infrastructure yeah. and what not Will that pull the crowds back to the game? Because uh, recently also, again, it should be said that, you know, the, the crowds... Absolutely. I know, I know guys come and yeah. watch, Absol but it, it's not like it used to be. Absolutely, Joe. Our, our crowds have suffered because of that. I mean, guys have trouble parking their car by the roadside at YMCA. Guys have trouble getting to Lugogo and there isn't enough parking for a basketball game. The game of basketball actually has numbers. Those numbers just have no home. I feel like... If any of these guys get seen, um, and, and, and I, I know who, who is premised on what, I know who has more partners outside here, because I can tell you for sure, I do not see us as a game of basketball being able to save enough in the, in the meantime to find ourselves a home and construct it. We need the intervention of government, we Corporate need the intervention companies. of the private sector, and we need someone in office to be able to do that. All right, um, Albert, uh, very interesting. This debate doesn't end here. We're going to take a very, very short commercial break. When we come back, the debate continues. Do not go anywhere. We're coming back after this break. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome back to the Kampala Serena Hotel. We're live. It is the press box proudly powered by DSTV. Every Monday, 9.45 p.m., we get into the big debate, the biggest sporting headlines. Tonight, it's a big one. I'm telling you, the football presidency is at stake. This Sunday, the elections will be on and it will be either Mr. Nasa Serunjoji or Grace Quizera to replace, replace the word really, uh, to rule. Mm -mm. It's also not the word. To elevate the game. To ele no, to campaign. <laughs> <laughs> to I, uh, to re Andrew, re Andrew's yeah. Kavale English. Eh? <laughs> to be the next president, Mr. <laughs> uh, after Mr. Uh, Tashrobia, uh, who of course has been in charge for quite a while now. Uh, but we shall be asking the two candidates more questions on the show. The hashtag still continues. Uh, it is uh, Fuba Presidency 2019 and NTV Press Box Fox. We've had some reaction from social media. Suddenly, uh, guys are already voting. Pe even people who would not be voting at the AGM are already <laughs> voting on Twitter tonight. But I want to ask, uh, I think, a question that cuts through all sports disciplines. Mm. Uh, and I don't know how you're going to respond to this, because some time back, we had issues, for example, with, with the court down in Logogo. Uh, corporate companies had come through. We didn't know about the naming rights. There seemed to be ownership problems. But that is not my focus. We, we, do we have enough courts? No. Do we have enough facilities? No. Can the game grow faster? No. We've got to make sure the kids have space to go and train, they have enough facilities. And I'll start with you, Grace. We're already struggling and getting funding from government. Your presidency, starting Sunday, if you win, 
what are we doing next to make sure we have a couple of more courts out there? He's talking about primary school, you know, basketball and roots coming through. Not every primary school has a basketball court, but from your, from your point of view, what do we do to get more facilities into Ugandan basketball? Where does this funding even come from? The, I, think, I think we both, we, uh, Nasa and I, uh, both uh, would like for us to have more facilities. Where we disagree is on the how. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I'm so uh, keen on uh, uh, the junior NBA is because what we have done as a federation is that we have partnered with the NBA. The reason why these schools sign up with us is because of what we are doing with the NBA. And when these schools have done so, they have had to meet the criteria, which is build the basketball courts. Mm -hmm. So FUBA has now built 60 basketball courts that could have ordinarily never had the, the, the money to build. So that's because of, of that partnership. Even for the mm. stadium, for us as a, a, an, a, an indoor stadium, for instance, uh, my colleague feels that we can do drives and uh, and save and you know be able to buy something and then somebody shall work towards it. I, I disagree. I think what we need to do is to to, in, to to continue with our partnerships to make. You see, now we are priority sport, one of six with the National Council of Sports, mm -hmm. and because of our engagement internationally, what we are doing very well as a basketball team for Uganda, we are flying that 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 flag high. Now, when you do that, you go, you say to government of Uganda, now we have a an, uh, we have a home and away uh, setup. We require a stadium. You go to government of Uganda, you ask them, you know what, give me a spot in Nambole. You take that spot in Nambole, the piece of land that they have given you. You go and do you you have a conversation with the people at the NBA. I, uh, I think Asha knows. I'm a, I shareholder in a, in a football club called Bright Stars. Mm -hmm. and, the other, and, the other, and the other shareholder is uh, Keisuke Honda, who is a footballer out mm. of... Uh, They're out into of the next round of the Uganda Cup. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And, 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 uh, and, and Keisuke is investing in Uganda because, uh, and partnering with me because he's comfortable with the direction, I, wh what I think of sport and he can trust. A man like that one is, uh, I, have, uh, I have colleagues, I mean, Lowell Deng, for instance, or LeBron James or Steph Curry, those are people that you can have a conversation with and say, listen, we have our piece of land in Uganda. Our girls have qualified at this level. We would like your support towards uh, building a stadium. To get $2 million from men who are making uh, 50 million a year is not, is not complicated. That, for me, is the fastest way for us to do it. And, 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 and I hope that that's something that I actually, I'm confident something that I can do to get us to, mm. to, to have the stadium. NASA, facilities, cuts across all sports. Uh, it's where most of our sportsmen struggle from because they can't go out there and play. Your administration, starting Sunday, if you win, what do we do? Uh, yes, thank you, Andrew. Uh, maybe quickly to respond to what my colleague is saying, that uh, we intend to raise the money from drives and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he misunderstood me. Uh, this is what I'm saying, because it is part of my manifesto that, you know, we've been struggling to get to the arena because every sport from boxing, netball, tennis, I mean, everyone wants to use the same arena. So this is what I said, that we need our own. How do we get our own? Of course, we need to partner with government because this is a big project. You can't do it without government. Mm -hmm. You partner with government. We have international partners that we can also partner with who can come in and fund this project. But uh, besides that, what I was saying is that we need to dream. And when you dream, you have to have something on paper. Right now, we don't have anything on paper. We need to have something on paper and we say, okay, we need a stadium. We but, need, but, but you've we, been VP administration. What do you mean we don't have anything on paper? Let me, let me, let me explain this. Mm. We, need, we need to have something on paper and say we need, for example, 5,000, 10,000 seater. You come up with a plan, have your artistic impression and all that. Next thing you say, how much is it going to cost us? It's going to cost us this much. How do we look for this money? So we need to have that project, uh, that uh, proposal to be in place. Now, once we have that, then it will be easy for us to try to look for that money, knowing how much it is going to cost us. All I was saying is that we need to start that project now. Yesterday. I was saying that uh, I, I, I may not be able to achieve it in four years, but at least if I start the process, maybe... If my colleague here loses and he comes back after four years, probably he will continue from where I stopped. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, Grace is still young enough to come back. Besides, besides, in four years, in four years.
Besides that, uh, we, 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 we don't differ too much uh, in terms of uh, what we intend to do on mm. uh, facilities. For example, when you start the primary league and the games are being played, definitely the schools that get involved, they will be forced to construct these facilities because they will get attracted to the game and eventually they will construct the facilities. Mm. You do the same for the secondary schools, get attracted to the game, they see everyone is playing basketball, they get involved, they will construct these facilities. And eventually we shall have quite a number of them. Um, Andrew, please allow me to respond to a tweet uh, that came through mm. earlier about uh, someone was asking why uh, Uganda is not among the countries that are going to be involved in the new league that is going to be uh, uh, unveiled in uh, January 2020 uh, with a partnership with NBA and FIBA. Mm. Look, we don't have international uh, a stadium that meets international standards. Look, uh, Lugogo, I don't think Lugogo can even see 2,000 people. You know, it's 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 about, it's about a yeah a thousand seater. Stretch it to one thousand two hundred. To one thousand two hundred, but that's when people are sweating. You know, mm -hmm. um, the best you can do is at least to have a three thousand seater if mm -hmm. you're to host a FIBA game. Now, I'm not even talking standards of the NBA. I'm talking lighting, you know, 3,000 pixels. You're, uh, you're so, talking so space between the court and the fans. Space between the, the court, <laughs> the advertising space. Yes, like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. We can't meet such standards. Now, when, when we talk about the biggest countries uh, in African basketball, Mali, Senegal, Angola, Mozambique, these are countries that have had their facilities built by the government. Mm. Yeah. It's very unfair if we put that uh, onto the FUBA, the next FUBA president, to build a stadium. I'm not saying they can't build a stadium, uh, but it's up to government. Mm. So here I come in to ask Ismail, who is Corporate <laughs> Affairs Officer, officer of National at the Council. National Council of Sports. Mm. Yeah. The indoor arena we have in Uganda was built in 1954, yeah. right? This was before Uganda got independence, and yeah. it's the same stadium we are depending on to host our international events. What is government of Uganda doing? Uh, to solve this problem, Ismail Dakaba Chigongo. Uh, I almost uh, wanted to start with your rejoinder when you say that you cannot blame the next football president. <laughs> I was almost going to say you cannot blame Ismail for not having facilities <laughs> in Uganda. Because I've actually promised on this show that um, Isha Allah, if I live as long as I, I feel I should, um, I feel like I'm going to write a book about uh, the challenges and one of them that I'll dedicate out of spaces facilities. Currently, um, as council, we do not have a capital development budget. And this is something we've been pushing for for a very long time, way before I joined council. Mm -hmm. National Council of Sports has written to all the relevant offices, in, into the Minister of Education and Sports, the Minister of Finance, the Parliamentary Budget Committee, to the Speaker of Parliament and to State House. Because we feel the only way will transform sport the way government wants it to be is because we need those facilities. Mm -hmm. Currently, government has committed to do to work on eight regional stadiums. Unfortunately, this does not include basketball yet because most of these are football stadiums. The one in Mbale, Lira, Kabale, Bushenyi, Mbarare, a bit of that. Uh, that's where the focus is going to be. But it's very important um, that I say this on NTV. We do not have the budget for stadiums yet. Mm. We wish that when the budget is passed mm -hmm. in the subsequent years, that this is unluckily. I, I like the vibe when the president goes around to speak to communities. Um, in many of the places that President Museveni has been to speak to people, one of the things they ask him about is their sports facilities. Yes. And this is where the conversation, I think, should be going. We should get there. But while, while we might beat ourselves up as uh, sports people, I like some of the things. Okay, it might be cheaper to have a football facility, I know, in terms of cost. Um, when you look at what Lawrence Mulindwa did with uh, Chitende, but also, before you even attain money, football has been in this country ever since um, was Kabakachua allowed for FUFA to be formed way back in 1924 when the first federation was formed. Do you know that since 1924 we've had so many FUFA presidents it's not until Moses Magogo mm. that someone went out and acquired land on behalf of FUFA and then submitted a proposal to have a stadium built. Now for me while we might whine about government I think we need to get to a point where like NASA and Grace might allude does basketball even have land? Let's start there. Yes. Before you go and request from government. Mm. Then thereafter, if the cost of, say, let's building the facility, like I've seen the one that was flashed in the newspapers this week, that ran that the cost of their basketball arena is 8 billion shillings.
which is peanuts to a government, really. If yes. we've uh, if we moved from 1986 to where we are, with all these numbers, these glossy numbers of uh, GDP and uh, megawatts that we're producing, if we move from 1986 to where we are, mm. we've got to a point where if we have the land, I doubt if uh, we needed eight billion. And like Grace was saying, if you have this kind of relationship with the NB and all these individuals who have these resources, I doubt if we had, let's say, 20% of that, we wouldn't walk into a uh, state house, wherever it will be by then, because it's been shifting mm. uh, ever since Uganda got independence. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it's been wherever, and now it's, it's in Entebbe. I don't think we could walk into state house and not have an, a debate about the need for this money. Mm. And for mm. me, that's where we need to go. Mm. Um, is that all, uh, Asha? No, if you're, you're still trying <laughs> um, to defend yeah, yourself, it's okay. I, I, I want to get away from the facilities because I also have something to say. You know, basketball has been in a very good place in terms of um, perhaps even overtaking cricket as a gentleman's game. Mm. In the 12 years of Ambrose Tashova, there's barely been war. I think the initial wars that were in basketball in, um, in terms of administration stopped in the first few years of Ambrose Tashova after John Simba, the late. May so rest in peace. Um, I think his faction that w did not like Ambrose Tashoya that much decided to stay away from administration. Mm. Isn't this an indictment, Grace and Nasa, that two people serving in the same administration decide to stand in an election to replace someone who many people has, might say has done fairly okay mm. for basketball? Isn't this... But, but, but is this a signal of what has gone wrong with FUBA? No, but NASA has made it very clear. He says there are decisions he couldn't take because there was someone right ahead of him. So as a president, there are things he's going to suddenly change when he comes into office. So Does that just confirm the, the conflict within the federation, within the executive? Well, well I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a question for NASA and Grace, maybe. I don't think there's a conflict. Uh, there's no conflict. And uh, yes, we are all serving the same federation and we all decided to stand for this position. But as you see, me and Grace, we are all passionate about this game. Yeah. We've invested a lot of time in this game. We've invested, uh, I mean, everything in this game. Win or lose, I'm not going to quit basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm a basketball person, I manage mm -hmm. a team. I, I mean, me and Grace, win or lose, we are going to still serve this game. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, we were even making a joke that uh, maybe if he loses, maybe he will fix me somewhere. As a special advisor on uh, basketball operations. I mean, so we are, we are, we are okay. Uh, uh, have an interesting, uh, before you come in, have an interesting, uh, I think uh, Kamadi uh, alluded to this one saying uh, from Fabian Pavez who says, if the mode of selection was being played by the rules of the game, uh, the football presidency 2019 should be decided by a series of three-pointer shots by, <laughs> by each quizzer and NASA on the court. And not by democracy, but you had something to say. Mr. Secretary General, maybe you listen to this guy, we go and compete on <laughs> three-point shots, we put this thing to rest, you know? You are the boss, you uh, decide. Uh, you, see, you see, some of the best managers of this you know, game never played it, oh, so... Yeah, but, but you know, de go. democracy is the closest <laughs> mankind has ever come to creating <laughs> equality, so we need democracy. Mm. Chris, <laughs> listen, um, guys, I'm a, I'm a, I was a rubbish player. For all, for, for all intents and purposes, but I was a player. I know, I know what it feels like to be suffering on a on a on a basketball court in uh, Makerere at 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 midday in third division. I know what it feels like to go and you're at the YMCA in second division and you're still struggling because it has rained. You come at nine o you come at nine o'clock and it stops raining at four, but you still have to play and it's you're you're skidding all the way. I know exactly. I I've been there in all these divisions i have uh, you know from the very bottom and i understand what 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 the, the pain is as a player and as a manager what I, where i disagree is, is the how you know isma is talking about us uh, collecting money for instance and, uh, and 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 getting land as a federation when we get get collections and it's really wow we are talking about 2 million shillings by the time we we have we have referee areas for for a couple of years by the time we we collect enough to cater for that and then buy ourselves a piece of land that we are going to build a stadium on <coughs> the nearest we are going to buy is uh, even in kisoro you can't buy a piece of land where i come from it's mm. more expensive than that come build that in bugweri i'll maybe, give you land maybe we go to bugweri but yeah. then who who goes who, who goes there it, <laughs> I, you know, I go there oh yeah. my God. you and katun <laughs> but now what what we need <laughs> what we need what we what we need is you see 
when when the athlete when the athletes got the 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 state the high altitude training, altitude training center, center done, from yeah. from the from the, from the president of from this country president, yeah. it's not because he it was alphabetical order not at all mm. it's because they were successful internationally yeah. and the things that i have been doing at the national team level and been <coughs> struggling with is to make sure that we have we get to a place where now for instance mm. we're one of six priority spots when you are when you're at that level you're able to tell government look here i am a big deal mm. i am doing this I'm doing this for you. 80% of Ugandans are, are under 30. As a, as, a, as a president of this country, you're looking and saying, these are, the, these are the people. So my jobs at the Junior NBA, for instance, are giving kids jobs, are giving kids scholarships. You say, you know what, this, this basketball that they've been talking about is doing a good enough job. Let me go and give them a place in, uh, in Nambole and find them uh, find and actually them money. the basketball land in Nambole is there. I thank you very yeah. much. So that's where we need to look. Now, after we've gotten that, we, but you're only going to get into, you're going, you get your foot into the door when you're doing something as well as we're doing. When you're saying, you know, what sir we are going to world cup qualifiers uh, this uh, city oil that you're talking about is number five in africa mm. when you say when these girls are coming back from their three and three they are their third in africa sir please shake hands with them go to the fat go to go to the speaker and say madam these women are, are killing it we are we are we are number one in africa please you know put in a good word for us we will come and hopefully by this time isma is a member of parliament mm -hmm. we shall go to the <laughs> parliament floor and they say you know what these basketballers are doing very well please Give them a place that they can they they, they, they can they can mm. they can build. We have uh, we have oil coming and the Chinese are, are, are part of that. They were part of the construction of Namboli. Yeah. Say please finish your job because you're you're here now. That's the way we need to think about this mm. stuff. We we need to we need to we need to continue in our efforts internationally because that gives children it gives these players something to strive for nobody no. <laughs> nobody try no yeah. one no one hones his skill set unless he's looking for a target and one of the targets is mm. this national team mm. when we have done that and we're now such a big deal that government of Uganda is saying you know what let's listen to basketball then we can we'll get the, the piece of land you, and we can build you, you've said so much and only wanted to say maybe you need to alter your language you said these girls are killing it and I'm imagining you're saying that in Parliament and <laughs> we're all running away. Well, you're not going to reach there. <laughs> well, uh, when you say that, I'll be, I'll be the only one who stays seated in my seat. <laughs> when you say killing it, everyone will race out of the yes, house. Yes, um, I've been fortunate to travel the African continent covering the game of basketball. And I'll tell you from a Malian perspective, Mali is really nowhere close to any of the richest countries on this continent mm -hmm. but they have a fantastic facility of basketball okay i'm not going to dwell on that but i'm going to dwell on their grassroots program now this is what mali decided to do their government gets retired players helps them to learn coaching courses and then every month give them a hundred dollars mm -hmm. okay as you know uh, an, an allowance mm -hmm. so these coaches go and get young kids five-year-olds six-year-olds uh, eight-year-olds they run uh, school leagues where they get these players and they've dominated completely the under 16 and the under 18 categories especially for girls and then also for boys uh, as of last year mm -hmm. now doing this is also a partnership between federations and government mm -hmm. it's not a lot of money that they are using but they have a structure yes. so it's not just about oh uganda we don't have uh, a big arena that is 12,000 seater like uh, the one in kilamba in angola it's also about the structure now a question to both uh, grace and, and nasa what are you going to do if or when you become president on Sunday that you're going to help to change the mentality also, mm -hmm. you know, of, of the way we run basketball in this country? So okay. I'll start with you, Grace. Uh, okay. But, uh, I think let's, let's start with Nasa. Yeah. Grace has mm -hmm. been Okay. Uh, of course, uh, thank you, Asha. But that is also related to the facility issue. Now, you mentioned about Angola. I'll give you an example. Being a businessman, I believe in starting small and growing big. Okay. okay? Now, uh, when you look at South Africa, for example, they have good facilities, but their basketball is way below. What do I mean here? Uh, there is a proposal that I have, for example, for, for the regions. You'd find that a district has like four MPs in one district. I want to start with these community basketballs because that's where the talent is. Now, even if you have a 10,000 seater in Kampala here and you don't have the talent, I mean, who is going to play in it? Mm -hmm. So we need to go down to the grassroots. You have these community basketballs. Uh, my friend Dakaba here wants to go to Parliament. I start with him and I say, okay, Dakaba, let's go to Bugwedi, construct this community basketball of about uh, 15 to 20 million. Get four MPs, each contribute 5 million, have that community basketball. There you're building the structures. 
you're getting the talent mm -hmm. to come to Kampala and play in this 10,000 seater. How okay. realistic is that, Nasa? Very in realistic. I mean, very realistic. Mm. Look at now, Dakaba is here. We've been discussing that with him. Mm. 2021, go into elections. Believe you me, get these MPs, tell him or her to contribute 5 million shillings to construct a community basketball because they want the votes from the youth. They will do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll give Grace two minutes uh, to, to have before I cross over to Joe. Uh, okay. I wouldn't go that way because I don't know what MPs are going to do and whether they have the money for it. Uh, look, uh, like I said before, the things that I, one of the reasons why I'm, I, 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 I struggle very hard to make sure the junior NBA is working very well is because, like I told you before, we have, we have 60 new basketball courts, okay? And we have 60 courts because FUBA has a relationship with the NBA. The NBA, what the NBA does for us is they guarantee, they, 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 what the contract says is they give you $15,000 worth of, of kit. You receive uh, championship rings, you receive uh, the uniform replica jerseys uh, for, for the entire NBA, you receive, uh, they, they, they give you an NBA asset who comes at the end of the, of the tournament. Mm. Those are things that excite the school. And then the school says, you know what, this is big enough for me to sign on to this program. When they sign on to this program, the criteria is to have the basketball court. So they're going to build that court, all right? Or they're going to refurbish it. What I want to do is to make sure we expand this thing. When we expand it, I'm not going to wait for the MPs or whatever it is or how they feel or how much money that they have. This school is supposed to do this thing and because they're excited about the opportunity. There's a kid, uh, Fayed for instance, uh, uh, who, is, who, was the best, who was the best player in the lower division, played in front of uh, uh, Luol Deng and Amadou Galofol. When a kid knows that he has the opportunity to play in front of somebody like an NBA star, he's going to be working very hard to make sure that he's going to be a very good player. Mm. His school is saying, you know what, this people the way that the, what they are doing for us is they give us a name we are going to be at the, on the on the on the back page and they will therefore cause it will cause for them to build the basketball court before you know it if we are, if we have 60 courts of 60, 60 courts already in Kampala because that's where the NBA is only as remember that think about what it would happen when we go to the east when we go to the north when we go to the west we're talking about as it is in the three years that the junior NBA has been on we have 60 courts if that's translated to the other to, and we have expanded to the other regions you're talking about four times that number that's where we need to go okay, quickly go. Andrew quickly uh, quickly Andrea uh, uh, my colleague here is talking about 16 new basketball courts we have 60 teams in the junior NBA does he want to say that each team that is playing in the junior NBA they didn't have a basketball court of course not mm. some of these schools had their basketball courts before so you can't say that because of junior NBA we have now acquired 60 new basketball courts no some most have been of renovated yes That's refurbished true. but most mm. of these schools had their facilities, facilities already, already. I, I want to quickly cross over joel because there's so much reaction happening on social media at the moment joel please quickly check us and tell us uh, what folks are saying online guys uh, this this debate is generating some really really interesting reactions on social media i'll start with atuhaire sherura who says so in this FUBA voting thing, what happens if both Grace and NASA are tied on number of votes at the, uh, by, the, by the end of Sunday? Who breaks the tie? How is it broken? Are, these gu are there guidelines in the basketball constitution for such a scenario? Over Ambrose is the one that decides. Uh, Olaker Robert Victor says, Grace's future looks bright for the presidency. As for FUBA presidency 2019, his opponent's time is now. Both candidates are valuable for the nation's uh, FIBA. Okiri Abusinja says, can't believe I've been missing NTV press box because of our WhatsApp call. Thought the call was needed. Nicholas Natuhereza, uh, you say, youth national teams are not just about winning, but rather exposing the talent you have at the time. Missing under 18 last year would mean that you have a four-year gap, and the under 18s you have then, uh, like Bale Fayed, would never never get that exposure. Sir Fabian Pavel says, whatever happened to the high school basketball sprite competition, it was an avenue that used to nurture basketball stars. Here's to hoping that whoever wins the presidency reignites the flame that was the sprite basketball high school competition. Tina Musoke says, what is needed is someone who can get money for the game, plain and simple. Uh, Sitoyen says, FUBA needs you, Grace Quizera. Alex Ndivwami says, Thumbs up to press box for the first ever uh, presidential, FUBA presidential uh, debate. Maybe one more. Sir Fabian Pave says, the beauty about this debate is that both Quizera and NASA are disagreeing in order to agree. And that's what leadership needs. Whoever makes it to the helm on Sunday will definitely not be a yes, 
yes, president, and hopefully basketball will get back its shine. What is clear is that these elections can't come any sooner. Andrew. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you very much. It's on Sunday, folks, just a few days away uh, before the AGM, and we shall know who the new FUBA president is. I want to wrap. I really, really want to wrap. And I want to wrap with the journalists first. And I'm probably going tricky with this one. I'm going to ask you to tell me who you think you would vote. <laughs> Very tricky because we might break some ties on this set. Uh, Grace and Nasa might not talk to you guys moving on in the future. But suddenly I must get an answer from both of you. Uh, and I'll start off with Dakaba. You've had the arguments, you've had the discussions uh, from both our, our contenders. We are on on Sunday. Uh, you guys might not have that much voting, voting power, sorry. Uh, but what do you make of their, of, of their reactions on the set today, Dakawa, in your concluding remarks? And by the way, who would you vote? I want to say this with my eyes closed, mm. so that none of the board members of National Council of Sports sees me. <laughs> uh, neither should the General Secretary see me. Because so, they, they, so they won't see you because your eyes are closed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Head in the sun. Okay. Because, yeah. Uh, because as council, we are not supposed to get involved mm. with, uh, with the election. Um, but uh, w while I, I, I could be able to choose privately, and I'm not supposed to choose here. Andrew, excuse me because of my mandate elsewhere. Okay. Um, sport in Uganda still needs a lot of human capital. If there are areas where we lack, we can discuss facilities, we can discuss uh, funding, we can discuss so many things. But as an industry, a subsector, or a mushrooming industry, we are still short on human capital. That's why many times I wish you could create as many offices in sports federation for all the people who are genuine and Grace and us are genuine about basketball. At least I've been to federations where I know people are not genuine. I was telling Grace here before we walked on to set about one who I think is not genuine. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention his name on the set. Yeah, but we need, we need to build this human capital. How do we create that base of people who are going to give time to the growth of sport? And for me, that is the challenge and the question for federations today. In, in Ugandan sport, it's been a habit that when one loses an election, they walk away. It's very possible that when NASA wins, Grace will walk away despite all the promises they made on set. Because we've seen them, we've seen this happen. Mm -hmm. After all, we've had the presidential election three years ago, and one of the candidates disappeared thereafter. One returned to the UK, the other has not appeared in the news for three years. So what, what, what do they have for Uganda? that made them stand for the president after losing an election, they have nothing to give the country. Mm -hmm. So, Grace and Nasa, mine is an appeal before, and thankfully I'm not a delegate because I, I, I don't, I may, I may have to vote for Ambrose again, mm -hmm. and that's an invalid vote. After yeah, Sunday, okay. please, please, we need all this human capital mm -hmm. in basketball. Stay with the game. Asha, your deductions, who would you vote for? So, Andrew, you have decided to throw me under the bus yeah. on live air. No problem. No. Anyway, I'm not going to fall for that because courtesy of my job at mm. FIBA, I cannot oh choose wow, sides. Guys. Because after <laughs> Sunday, I have to Cancel write an FIBA. article. Yeah, write. <laughs> I have to I'm write an article. I'm going to select for. Wait for my answer. I'm going to select who no, I would no, vote no, for. No, no, no. You're such a coward. I don't think you can do that. No, wait, 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 wait and see. <laughs> no, but uh, like Dakaba said, uh, really, we need both of these guys in the game because they bring different attributes uh, to the game of basketball for the last uh, few years that they've worked uh, with this game they've brought so much um, and, and it's good to have really the rivalry between uh, City Oil and, and mm. KIU uh, all of us on this set uh, share a certain forum on one of these social media platforms and, and we're always you know laughing about some of these things but to be honest uh, after Sunday I really hope that we could look uh, they could look each other in the eye and still be able to work together despite of what happens because elections can really bring out the worst uh, in human beings uh, but i think <laughs> why are you laughing oh, <laughs> I know, I don't. Yeah, but um, I, I really think that uh, the game of basketball, from a national level, from mm. a regional level, East Africa, that is, and also from an African level, mm. and also where the game of basketball is going, uh, Uganda needs to be in that equation, yeah. but really with all their input. NASA is very good with uh, documents, you know, courtesy of him being a lawyer, okay? I think that... Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, Grace, uh, on the other hand, also has a lot of um, international relations mm -hmm. from that perspective. His involvement with the uh, junior NBA, I feel, uh, is something that would be great for Ugandan basketball. But at the end of the day, 
all the best to uh, both of them. May okay, the best uh, win. Two final tweets here before I let the two gentlemen have their closing remarks. One is from one of the best female basketballers Uganda has ever seen, uh, Flash Flavia, uh, on Twitter. Uh, she says, women basketball is key. Grace Quizera has always shown his support actively and financially. It is key for actions to speak louder than words. Uh, I then have an interesting message here coming through, uh, and uh, I don't know who is going to answer this. I think maybe you should answer this, or one of you two guys should answer. From a Tyre uh, Shirura who says, so in this FUBA voting, uh, what happens if both Grace and Nasa are tied on number of votes uh, by the end of Sunday? Who breaks the tie? How is it broken? Are the guidelines in the basketball constitution for such a scenario? Or uh, Ambrose is the one that decides. <laughs> uh, you know, I think he picks that from uh, the recent Cr Uganda Cricket Association yeah. president uh, election. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've even postponed the re-election because there are 24 delegates. And um, Suvika and then um, the other gentleman, Badu mm -hmm. Asasira, finished tied 12 all. Okay. And the constitution is silent. There's a lacuna on who they pick after that. Grace, so they happens? postpone the extraordinary assembly and something like I that. I think I'll, 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 I'll do my closing as a human being and allow my bosses, the secretary general and the lawyer, yes. he understands Give how this thing works. Yes. I, I'm, I'm a mere mortal. G -g 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 Give me your fine. I mean, you've had his side of the story. You've had this side of the story for a while since you both were contesting. Yes. You know what your manifesto is. Uh, we've had a good debate on the show today. Your concluding remarks also include the basketball fans out there. None of you guys has talked about the basketball fans, what they really get out of this battle moving forward. But your closing remarks, please. Uh, I'd like to appeal to uh, my friends who are going to be voting on Sunday. Uh, I'm a player like uh, many of you have, many of you are or have been. I have been with you in the in all the divisions. I have, I have, I have come through that level to sit well is a success story of the of the lower divisions and and i understand what we need as a player and what we need as a as a manager when i have gotten there i've also been able to find uh, uh, money my colleague said the reason why he hasn't won is because he hasn't found a big enough sponsor in 17 years and uh, <laughs> well I, i've done in a shorter time and i and, and that's what, something i want to bring uh, uh, to the federation, our success at uh, uh, our success internationally is because of the work that I'm putting in at the national team. Our our growth uh, for the for the kids is the work I'm putting in at the junior NBA. So I am appealing to you to give me the opportunity mm -hmm. to continue to do this job so that I can elevate the game. Okay, that is Grace Quizera, uh, who hopefully will be a football president on uh, Monday. Uh, but Mr. Nasser Serenjo, uh, uh, quickly uh, uh, allow me to first uh, correct uh, Asha here. Mm. He talked about uh, international relations. Uh, you see, being the General Secretary of the Federation, uh, you communicate directly with all the international relations that you're talking about. So I have the contacts. I know the people. Uh, I have helped a couple of players to go for college basketball in the U.S. So I am for basketball. Mm. We no lose. I'm going to remain in basketball. We both uh, are involved in management of uh, clubs. So we are not going to detach ourselves from that so we no lose we are for basketball and for information i intend to start a basketball academy very soon so whether i win or lose i'll still be involved in basketball mm -hmm. what is your closing remarks though to, to, to the voters out there to, uh, the, to the voters out there may the best man win good luck to my friend uh, quizzer okay guys I'm sure you're going to say good luck as well. Yes. Uh, you know, earlier on, somebody talked about if we can decide this thing on three-pointers. Mr. Secretary General, if you can consider, <laughs> I'll be very, very grateful. Let me also wrap by saying... I'll, I'll rebound for both of you when yeah. you're missing and hitting the rim. Let me, let me decide by saying that if I was voting, I would vote for one of you two guys. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday. Thug life. Thug uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, thank you very much. It's, it's really a pleasure having you guys on the show. And I'm sure the basketball folks out there have enjoyed the debate on Sunday. It is either Nasa Serunjoji or it's Grace Quizera for the FUBA presidency. And for, for the Manchester United fans who have been following the debate tonight, yes, uh, United are leading 2-0 at the bridge under Herrera and Paul Pogba as Oleguna Sosha tries to take the Red Devils to the next round. Thank you very much for have joined us tonight. Continue the debate on Twitter. We've been live from the Kampala Serena Hotel, proudly powered by DSTV. Thank you very much to the panelists as well. Thank you very much, Dakawa Ismail Chigongo, for joining us today. Thank and you. Max Ali, definitely. Andrew Mwangusha, Robert Madoi uh, will be back next week, and Joel Kamadi as well. Plus, everyone who is behind the scenes and made sure the press box was a success tonight. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. See you on Monday. Be safe and good night.